You're watching The 7 from WATE 6 on your side. Good evening, I'm Bo Williams and welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the Big 7 stories right now and topping the list for us tonight. Abortions are now illegal in Tennessee as the trigger law has officially gone into effect. The law was passed back in 2019 but was brought to the forefront after the U.S. Supreme Court's Roe v. Wade ruling in June. It's a decision millions of Americans are now dealing with, including doctors. Now, with the abortion law taking effect today, some doctors are speaking out. The new law says physicians will be charged with a Class C felony if they do the procedure. There is a murky clause for doctors who determine there is an emergency need for an abortion, with each doctor being forced to prove the case was an emergency. Every day since I learned of the implications of the trigger ban, I worry about becoming a felon. The abortion provider can mount an affirmative defense for acting to save the mother's life. But the scales of justice are tipped in favor of the state with an affirmative defense instead of an exception to the law. The bill contains an affirmative defense, which I think is a very smart thing. Um, one, we are trusting doctors to make that medical decision. They have the medical expertise and they have the records that can prove that they acted rightly. Lawmakers are also using Ohio as a good example of affirmative defense, citing 70 instances where doctors were questioned about abortions performed to save the life of the mother. All they had to do was turn over their records, and not one was ever prosecuted. The decision to ban abortions in Tennessee is one that is affecting women across the state. That includes one East Tennessee woman who had an abortion earlier this year and believes the Tennessee abortion law is a mistake. Shelly has been open about her abortion across online platforms. She is already a mother of one, and as a physician herself, says the decision to have an abortion was very difficult. But she believes if others could understand the depth of why women may need the procedure, it would be clear that something needs to change. Last winter, Shelly tried for a second pregnancy and was successful, but soon she received unfortunate news following genetic screenings that were done. My results came back positive, um, which this is a screening test, which means this is not diagnostic, and I more than anybody understand that. And so they came back for high risk for trisomy 18. Of the babies that are born, live born with trisomy 18, about 90% of them um, do pass uh, by age one. Now, there, there are some outliers there, but those are kind of the general statistics that we know about. With the information and results Shelly had, she made a choice. In February, at 12 weeks pregnant, she had an abortion. It was a decision that she tells us was not easy, one that is still that still has an effect on her today, which makes it all the harder to accept the state's trigger law officially being in place. The irony of today is that my due date for that pregnancy was tomorrow, and it it's heartbreaking um, that we feel like this is what our state stands for and that this is what how we are treating women first and foremost and physicians that are taking care of women. Now she fears for other women and says if this law was in effect during her pregnancy everything would have been more difficult. Shelley also shared that she is trying for a third pregnancy and has been faced with a lot of anxiety knowing that the trigger law is in effect. Next now on the Big 7 at 7, Knoxville Police investigating a shooting that sent a man to the hospital. We're told officers got the call this afternoon from an apartment in the 400 block of Taylor Holmes Road. Police say the victim was taken to the hospital. His injuries, not life-threatening. According to KPD, the suspect's left in an SUV. If you have any information that can help, maybe you saw something, call 865-215-7165. That's the number for East Tennessee Valley Crime Stoppers, and you can remain anonymous. Next on our list for you tonight, we're learning a motorcyclist has died in a crash involving a semi. A highway patrol report says the crash happened in Morristown at the I-81 Inca Highway interchange. The report goes on to say the motorcyclist, who has been identified as 53-year-old Brian Markham, was heading down the highway when he came up on the semi. Now, we're told he began to brake, but still ended up hitting the vehicle's second trailer. Next on the 7 for you, a Knoxville man is accused of sending illicit images to a high school Snapchat group. The Knox County Sheriff's Office revealing the arrest, and it's someone we've covered several times before, Franklin Delano Jeffries. He is now facing six counts of sexual exploitation of a minor by electronic means. According to the Sheriff's Office, an officer assigned to Carnes High School reported hearing from a victim that an adult man was a member of a Snapchat group made up of more than 30 students and had been sending illicit images and videos to the group. The sheriff's office, we're told, had uh, help from the FBI looking into the group and arresting Jeffries. 
Now, we remember Jeffries from a fake bomb threat claiming on his Facebook page saying that he built a bomb and everyone in Knoxville would die. Now, we spoke with Jeffrey's mother after his arrest. She told us there was never a bomb, but her son was suffering from PTSD and upset over a custody matter. Jeffries, in April of 2018, took a plea deal in exchange for prosecutors dropping charges over a threat made on YouTube against a judge. Next on our list, Governor Bill Lee is now speaking out about the recent arrest of Tennessee's former House Speaker Glenn Cassida. As we've told you, Representative Cassida and his former Chief of Staff, Cade Cothran, were arrested on Tuesday. They are accused of using their jobs in the state legislature to funnel money to a political consulting firm they were secretly involved with. They've both pleaded not guilty to those charges, including theft and bribery. It's a case that Governor Lee is calling unfortunate. It's really important that that the people trust elected officials that um, that are public servants. It's really important. They do that. And when there's a breach of that trust, it's a uh, it's very unfortunate. It's more than unfortunate. It's a, it's, it should not happen in our state. Yesterday, we learned the two are scheduled to go on trial in October. Both Cassidy and Catherine face up to 20 years in prison. Next on the Big 7 at 7, more than 10% of Knox County schools school buses are off the road amid a bus driver shortage. As you can see, a nationwide bus driver shortage is affecting our local school systems in Knox County, not alone. Meanwhile, parents are expressing concerns about the amount of time it is taking their children to get home from school. Misty LaFord. Uh, her son goes to South Doyle Middle. She says that he's ridden the bus since he was in kindergarten. Both she and her husband work late hours and are not able to pick him up after school, so they rely on the bus services. But due to the bus driver shortage, it's been taking longer for his son to get home. It's very distressing. You know, I'm at work and my mom's calling saying, does she pick him up or get them at the bus stop that he's not there? So here I am trying to not panic and trying to get a hold of him. The Ford says bus drivers usually inform the school when running late and the schools notify parents, but she says they have not gotten any of those warnings recently. Just a reminder, most of our area school systems contract bus services. Knox County Schools said in a statement that the district is currently about 35 drivers short countywide. And rounding out the Big 7 for you tonight, Knoxville Area Transit is cutting back on some of their routes starting next week because of the ongoing worker shortage. Starting Monday, two of the routes will be eliminated altogether. We're talking routes 10 and 19 to Sequoia and Lakeshore. And all Sunday services will be reduced with the last departure from downtown leaving at 515. We're told core routes will continue running until 1115 during the week like normal. And the, the uh, paratransit lift services will remain the same during the week into Saturday. We should also note CAT is still trying to help those getting to work. So if these changes impact your commute to and from your job, you should call the number on your screen, 865-524-0319. Of course, we'll have more information on those changes for you over on our website. You can check it out there. Just go to WATE.com.